Hello everyone, today in this video we will fight against the most character of our world around us and this time we will talk about a very peculiar book which was released first in Russian and Soviet Union in 1970 and it's authored by a very good Russian historian who lived uh, since 1912 till 1992 so he survived till the collapse of Soviet Union I mean Lev Gumilov, the son of the great Russian poet Anna Akhmatova. And he was a very keen and dedicated uh, scholar of the steppe nations and also polyglot. He knew many languages, including the historical languages, and he was studying really meticulously steppe nations history. And one of his books, uh, which was translated into English as In the Search of the Imaginary Kingdom of Prester John, tells us mm, the mm, complicated relations between step nations, uh, I mean between themselves, and also complicated relations, because the step nations an external world. In this case, China going from the east, uh, Persia, so Muslim Persian state in this case, and of course mm, Eastern, Central, and a little bit Western Europe, for which uh, Tatars were mainly um, subject of more imagination than fact. That's why the title also says in the search of imaginary kingdom of Prester John, because as investigation shows what is emphasized by Mr. Gumilov, many of the warriors of Genghis Khan and his uh, followers, of course the people who followed after him in ruling the Mongol empires, many of their warriors and their subjects were Christians, but they were Nestorian Christians who followed the branch of Christianity originated by the mm, priest coming from Byzantium called Nestorius. And Nestorius claimed, and he was stubborn claiming this, that Jesus didn't have mother. So it was a heresy for Orthodox Christianity like in Byzantium as well as in the West. So after some time his followers called after his name, Nestorians, had to leave Byzantium and they were really determined having one-way ticket because they couldn't come back. So they were doing everything what they could to convert as many tribes, as many nations they encounter in the new lands where they came to. And this story uh, described by Mr. Gumilov, it's quite interesting because in contrast to Western European countries, especially now, in the Soviet Union, despite all of this censorship and so on, but luckily Mr. Gumilov was not writing much about economy and politics, he was writing uh, in this book about step nations, he could analyze also uh, racial and ethnic dependences and uh, features of the nations he, des he was describing in his book without any accusations. And uh, thanks to uh, reading of this work, one can understand why among Uyghurs or current Mongols, sometimes we have uh, kids that are born with red hair or even blonde hair and green eyes and maybe a little bit uh, light brownish eyes, many, many other things are explained. And that's why I encourage you to read this book. But one thing I have to warn you about, to have some reservations towards some statements which can be found in the text of this very good work, is that Mr. Gumilov was a very avid Russian, uh, I wouldn't say chauvinist, but something like patriotic nationalist. And when he describes relationship between 
Russian state or Kievan Rus or Novograd Rus between West and these uh, states from which Russia and uh, for the Russian state evolved because it was not so simple how modern Russia evolved but when he describes relationship between these states from which Russia evolved and Western Europe which he described as German Romanic entity he always puts a really nationalistic Russian point of view and really despises uh, the way how Western nations according to him sees everything which is on the east from the Vistula river as a wilderness but uh, if we if we know that uh, such way of thinking is present among many representatives of uh, Russian or uh, wider elites in the post-soviet countries it's easier for us to understand their way of thinking and the way of presenting facts that's why when one is aware while reading this book what can be the problem and in what aspects it's worth reading it because it extends our point of view not only in the historical topics but also in the contemporary topics thanks to and thanks to such information we can understand better this what's happening uh, all around the world at the moment that's why in the search of imaginary kingdom by prester john by lev gumilov it's a book that luckily was translated into english and it's definitely worth reading and i encourage you to to read it all the best have a nice day